hi guys welcome back to my channel so i'm here i'm back and i now have a beautiful baby girl which is crazy i know a lot of you have been worried about me because i kind of was keeping you very updated right up into the point where i went into the hospital and then i've kind of been radio silent and after watching this video you might understand why um, it was kind of a you know, difficult experience we'll just say that and i've been recovering today is kind of the first day where i feel like I've gotten myself together enough that I want to come on here and share my story. So I've been thinking about this all day. I decided I wanted to break this up into two videos. Today we're going to talk about the labor and delivery experience. I did get a bunch of vlog footage so I can show you that. And then the second video will be introducing you to baby girl, sharing her name and why we picked it and giving you some updates on her and how I've been doing postpartum. Um, I wanted to break them up because otherwise this video will be like 45 minutes long and this part is gonna be a little bit, um, what's the word? Part one is not gonna be quite as happy sunshine and rainbows is part two. I know that's a little annoying, but don't worry, part two will be up on this channel within 24 hours. So I'm not making you wait too much longer. I just really felt like I wanted each of those things to have their own moment. I didn't want to feel rushed or cut off. So, so that all being said, getting into my labor and delivery experience, I need to do a disclaimer and have a trigger warning. I do not recommend watching this video if you are pregnant, if you are highly sensitive. Unfortunately, ended up being a pretty traumatic experience, so I just don't want to scare anyone else. Now, if you guys remember, if you've been here with me, my son, who is currently three and a half, that was a really horrible labor and delivery experience. Um, the long story short of that is that he got stuck in the birth canal. He came out with his hand up. So he was stuck in the birth canal for two and a half hours or so. And when he came out, I had very significant damage, we'll say that. And it was a hard recovery. And because of that, I was given the option this time to have a scheduled C-section. And I thought about it for a few days. If you follow me on Instagram stories, I was kind of asking for people's opinions. And most people actually said to go for the C-section. And let me tell you, if I have a regret in my life, it is not going for that C-section. So anyway, with all of that said, I'm going to share the vlog footage that I have from that day. And then you'll notice the footage kind of cuts off abruptly. I'll come back on and finish the story. It is August 25th, 2020, about 6.30 PM. And I think I'm in labor. You know, you never really know for sure if it's gonna progress and become the real deal or if it's just a false alarm. I'm just saying for the record, I'm just getting on here and letting you know, I think it could be. And I started feeling contractions around like four o'clock. I'm um, just very mild. And then they continue to come every like 15, 20 minutes lasting for about a minute. They're not super painful yet, but I feel like my body is gearing up. Okay, it's 7.30 now and I'm still consistently having contractions about every 20 minutes. They're not super painful yet but they're consistent and my gut is telling me that this is happening. So I'm working on the nurse's baskets. I wanted to have a little basket of treats and stuff for the nurses who are on shift. So I have a bunch of bars, cupcakes, muffins, chocolate. Okay, it is now 4.46 a.m. on August 26th. So those original contractions from last night, they stopped. So I thought it was just false labor. And then about three hours later, they started again. And currently they are about four minutes apart, which is closer than you really want them to be. Right now I need to get to the hospital. So we're just waiting on my dad and stepmom to get here, obviously to watch Carter so we can take off. So I wanna to try to eat something because another thing I learned is once you get the epidural, you can't eat. How are you feeling? Uh, really tired, but excited. I, I slept for three hours, so I'm good. Here's dad. That's right. It's He's going to be taking over the vlogging. That's right. Okay, so we're at the hospital now. I think baby girl's going to come today. It is August 26th at like 6 in the morning now, I think. Show mommy real quickly. There she is. Oh my gosh, you guys. I have to wear a mask during... <laughs> Labor. Yeah, so started contractions pretty heavy again this morning at like 4 a.m. They got a little bit closer together. They were within four or five minutes and they were a lot, you know, more, they were a lot stronger. And so we made our way over to the hospital. Uh, we got here. She's 
three and a half centimeters dilated. So um, we're not officially admitted yet because they want to see her progress a little bit a little bit further along. So we're going to see in the next hour or so if uh, the labor progresses. Hello guys, update. It is 7.29, um, so in a couple hours. I came in at 3.5 centimeters and I've progressed to five. So we're getting me the epidural soon. I don't know if you could tell. I'm in a lot of pain. Every contraction is getting extremely painful, so very excited for the epidural. What else? Oh, I have to keep this on for everything. Baby girl update. Um, Brittany's doing well. She just had her epidural and she's feeling much better. I don't think she's feeling the contractions at all anymore. Um, the doctor told her to go ahead and take a nap and rest a little bit, you know, before the process progresses and we get a little bit closer. It's 11.25. I was so scared for the epidural. Didn't feel it. No pain. So if you're scared for the epidural, don't be scared. Epidural is the best thing that's ever invented in the history of mankind because no, I can't feel the contractions. They're still happening. I can't feel it. One centimeter per hour, and I'm trying to get to 10. So they're gonna come in and break my water, because it still hasn't broken yet, and that should help speed things up. All right, so that's kind of where the vlog footage stops. And as you can see, everything was going extremely well. I was having the ideal birth experience. I just felt so positive about everything. Like, it could not have been going better for me. And as you saw, um, I had the epidural and it was so quick and painless to get the epidural, which in hindsight, you know, sometimes when things are too good to be true, they are. Because I do remember with Carter when I got the epidural, like it was an ordeal. And if you are not aware, you know, it's a pretty long needle. I think like three or four inches, like a big needle, they stick into your spine. It was not quick and painless, we'll just say that. I mean, I was so happy once I had it, but it was not something like this time where I literally didn't even feel it. Like he put it in, I'm like, did you do it yet? He goes, yep, you're good. The epidural was doing its thing. I was not feeling my contractions. I was numb from kind of like the waist down and I was happy, I was chilling. I was just waiting to fully dilate because at that point I think I was six centimeters when they put in the epidural. It was actually to the point, the doctor, his name was Dr. Cotton. When he left the room, I said, Dr. Cotton, you're my hero. So at this point, we're kind of just waiting for me to dilate, we're waiting for things to progress, and I start to notice that I'm getting some feeling back in my left leg, and then some more time passes, and I have some feeling back on my left you know, side in my uterus, so I'm feeling contractions kind of only on one side, which is a weird feeling. Um, and I tell the nurse who's there, and she goes, oh no, that's fine, that's normal. Um, it's good that you feel pressure because that will help you with the pushing. Because with Carter, I was so numb, I didn't even know if I was pushing or not pushing. I probably had too much maybe. But I'm like, no, I mean, it's kind of more like pain, not pressure. She's like, no, no, it's fine, it's normal. And then as time is going by, I'm noticing I'm feeling more pain. Like the levels of pain are going up, up, up. And I do wanna briefly interlude here. Um, I don't know if maybe I don't have a high pain tolerance or if I do have a pain tolerance. Everyone is different in how their contractions feel, but for me, um, they're extremely painful, unbearably painful to the point that I can't breathe through it, I can't talk through it. The only thing I can do is cry and scream. Like that is the level. It's not like a 10 out of 10, it's a 15 out of 10. Cannot even cope with the pain, okay? So when I'm starting to feel pain again, I'm starting to panic, right? So I'm like, no, no, okay, this is serious now. I'm at like a level seven pain. I feel like the epidural has worn off like 80% or so and I keep pressing the button and it's doing nothing absolutely nothing so she goes okay fine I'll um I'll get the anesthesiologist to come back in here and take a look so then I find out the nurse says oh he's not available right now they're having a little emergency in the hospital um, apparently a woman had come in she didn't know she was pregnant and was having a baby at that moment on the floor in the hallway. So all of the doctors, all of the nurse, all of the staff were like on deck for this emergency situation. This is where things started to get really bad, okay? Within 15 minutes, I have full feeling, 100% feeling. I don't even wanna think about it. I don't know how to explain it. This level of pain um, honestly felt like I was dying. Ryan said it looked and sounded like you were being murdered. Like I was just 
screaming at the top of my lungs, crying hysterically, like couldn't get it together because of this pain. So then what happens? I start getting the urge to push. And once you start getting that urge, I don't know if you've ever given birth before and specifically had a natural birth, I mean, there's no turning back. I mean, you, the baby is coming out. And so I'm like, the baby is coming, like I have to push. And she's like, no, 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 you can't, you can't. There's no doctors. She's on the phone calling, trying to get a doctor in. At this point, Ryan literally goes into the hallway and starts screaming for a doctor. I'm on the bed screaming like I'm dying, asking for drugs. I'm like, please give me anything, give me something. Like I can't handle this pain. This is like the worst thing I've ever experienced. Ryan comes back in, a doctor comes running in the room. Apparently he just delivered the baby in the hallway, ran into the room literally as I'm like pushing. Right before the baby actually comes is something called the ring of fire. And I am convinced that there is no more painful thing you can experience in this life than that. And they're like, okay, well, you gotta focus on pushing, you have to push. But every time the contraction was so painful that all I wanted to do was cry. So you have to like get it together enough to like focus to push. I guess the good news of the situation was I was in so much pain that I actually pushed her out in three pushes. Cause I knew I physically could not do it again. Like that was the last chance I had. So, so literally, three rounds of pushing, she came out and um, lo and behold, you know, I had the injuries from before. Yep, that happened again. Completely just everything. <laughs> God, I don't even know. Do I even wanna put this on the internet? So yeah, I tore again, re-ruptured that injury. But this time I had no epidural. So they had to um, stitch that back up. So yeah, I know some people are going to say, Brittany, this isn't that bad. People have natural childbirths all the time. But the majority of those people, I would venture to say 99% of them went into the experience with that intention. I did not. I would never. Um, it was not what I wanted or expected. And I'm not kidding when I say, for me, it was like truly traumatizing that level of pain. So, you know, of course, the beautiful part of this at the end of the tunnel is they hand her to me and she is just the little sweetest, most perfect thing I've ever seen in my life. So, you know, you get that at the end. So it's, of course, all worth it. So I had a natural childbirth, no drugs, felt the entire thing, and I had, um, the damage. Things may never be the same. I have to go get it looked at next week. I do just want to say if you are going through childbirth and you start to notice that your epidural is wearing off, make your voice heard. Make sure someone listens to you and speak up early. And look, it's not the end of the world. Again, I know people go through this just for me and what I'm able to handle and take. Um, and again, how unexpected it was, it was just a lot. So I, um, I've i been recovering from that. I think that like physically my recovery has been harder this time than with Carter. Like I'm having a really hard time. I'm even walking or sitting or anything. It's like a lot of pain and I'm on pain medication. So I actually had to call in. They're gonna try and get something stronger for me. Again, I'll be okay. I have a healthy baby girl. I'm not even trying to complain. The most important thing I have my sweet girl and right now I'm gonna end this video and I'm gonna film part two which is introducing her sharing her name how she's been doing and how I've been doing postpartum and all of that so look out for that video it will be up very soon within 24 hours here on this channel and thank you for your patience again sorry I was not updating you guys so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys back here very soon